What up, everyone? So it's here. The end of the month, kind of. A uh, monthly review for the month of November. So the November boxes have just finished coming. The December boxes have just started coming. So it's the perfect time for the monthly review. For those of you who don't know, this is the review for November, but the boxes don't end up coming till halfway through the following month. That's why this review is always in the following month. Just for those of you who don't know. So, if anyone's tuning into this channel for the first time, hello, welcome. The whole point of this channel, what I do, this video, everything I'm about, is all about helping you, the viewer, find the best box for you. There's so many boxes out there, and there are a million unboxers, but not too many people really do reviews. So I try to break it down the best I can by giving you dollar amounts in a quality, quantity, variety type of thing, break it down to simple formulas that you can understand to help you decide what you want. So it's more than just showing you what's in the box, it's talking about it and explaining things and possibly helping you go in the right direction to what you might want. Now it's different for everyone. The co most common question I get on the channel is, what's the best box? And the answer is, well that fucking depends on what you like. It's different for everybody. I do my best to give you an idea, but it still depends what you like. Marvel vs. DC, comics vs. collectibles, it all depends. So that's why I do this, not just the individual reviews, to still show you uh, what's in these boxes. Because just because I put something at number one, doesn't mean it's best for you. So hopefully that'll help. And um, before I start, I just want to let you know, if you don't want to listen to me talk, which I totally understand, because this is a very long video, skip to the end and we'll have just pictures of everything in the box and I'll be totally silent, you won't have to hear me talk at all. Or, if you want to look at a specific box, look in the description and I'll have timestamps for where each box appears in the video so you can skip ahead so you don't have to watch all the stuff in between. So feel free to jump around and do whatever you like. So, that being said, I have 11 boxes here this month? Yeah, 11 boxes. We'll start at number 11, count down to number 1. I'll talk briefly about them. I'll show a quick picture, talk about the company a little bit. Um, some recent events have happened between some of these companies, and I know a lot of you wanted me to talk about them, so I will. So, without further ado, let's start at number 11. Number 11 is the BAM box, unfortunately. Now, uh, the van box usually is never on the bottom of the countdown. This month, month is a big exception to that rule, though. They've had some troubles with this month's box. So a lot of people have said that this is their worst box and that they had a lot of problems with it. And I don't blame you. Um, but it wasn't exactly intentional. The BAM box company has released a statement saying that this wasn't their intended box. They had to remove items um, due to licensing issues. I'm not sure exactly what they were what the licenses were, what the items were, but they had planned to put certain items in the box and there was a licensing issue so they had to take them out and this is kind of what they came up with last minute. So um, it's not entirely their fault. I wouldn't say they're off the hook by any means, but you know, I, I understand that happening and I, I wouldn't get too upset about it because me personally, I have plenty of confidence in the BAM box. I, I think they're gonna be just fine. This box in particular, um, it just had some stuff. It kind of looks like they did it last minute because the people they got signatures from aren't very well-known people. We got a cosplayer versus the regular like actors that we get and, so, and stuff like that. So this one had a very low value and the people that were involved in it weren't very well-known. And we got, it was all signed stuff and all artwork, which I'm fine with, but it was by artists that are a little lesser known. So it was just kind of like bottom of the barrel type of people where they're just not well known enough to create any sort of value for the box. But you know, shit happens. Like it, every company in here, doesn't matter how good or bad they are, they have bad months. It happens. There's no box out here that's ever had a perfect run. They all have bad months. People always run into licensing issues. We're constantly hearing from companies that items were um, late to shipping, so boxes are getting shipped out late, so on and so forth. So it happens. I'm honestly not worried about it. The BAM box has been one of the best boxes out there. They've done things that no other box has done to this day. And things that I personally really appreciate, like signing and numbering artwork and getting autographs from people. There's so many things that they've done a million times before, way better than any other company. So I just think they had a really bad month. It happens. So I'm not worried about it. I'm personally not going to cancel. I know a lot of people did because of this box. If you want my advice, I would say don't cancel at this point. 
wait it out. I'm sure they'll bring it back. They've already made a bunch of announcements for things they're putting into next month's box. So, And from what it, they've told me personally, it sounds pretty good to me. And they've always listened to my advice anytime I've contacted them with issues or advice on how to do the boxes. They've always listened to the customers. So I'm not too worried about it. I think it's just a bad month. Um, other things that have happened... The, I don't know if a lot of you have seen it, but the whole the NerdBlock company had made a statement on their Facebook, if anyone checks their Facebook, I don't know how many people do, about the BAM box. They heard that the BAM box had a bad box, and they posted a video, the CEO, Russ Montague, posted a video saying, if you purchase this box to contact NerdBlock, and they'll send you a free, I don't know, I'm quoting that, it's free plus shipping, a free NerdBlock from the past. Now... A lot of people really appreciate it and they said like, wow, that's really nice of this company. That's so cool of the company to do that for them. And to that I say, is it? Was that a cool move? Because when I saw the video, I thought, man, that's kind of a dick move to be quite honest. Because a lot of people see it as the company giving away stuff to, to make up for another company's bad box. But it, it was really just a low blow in my opinion. Um, I know Russ Montague. We had... Me and Johnny Tejas and Rusty did a video with him. We interviewed him um, a while back, probably like a year ago. If I find the video, I'll post it in the description. But we interviewed him. Super nice guy. He's a really cool guy. Um, but he's not stupid. He's definitely a businessman. And I know he was doing that as a part of a strategy. His strategy was to take out the competition. He saw an opportunity and struck on it to try and take out some of his competition. So that's definitely what was happening. And the funny thing is that the NerdBlock company hasn't even been doing that great. Their recent boxes have been pretty good, like the past month or so. But before that, there was a good like four to six month period where all of their boxes really sucked and they lost a bunch of customers. And that's why they're giving away free boxes. If anyone's ordered from the NerdBlock company in the recent past, you'll notice that they're giving away old boxes for $10 a piece. And that's because their business dropped so drastically because they weren't doing well as a company. So they had this overstock of all these boxes that didn't sell that they had nothing to do with. They couldn't do anything with them. So that's why they're giving them away for free now because they couldn't sell them. And that's why they're selling these grab blocks for $10 is because they have so much overstock from not selling them from before. So that's why they're giving them away because they have nothing to do with them. They can't sell them. They're not going to repost um, old boxes and they're not obviously not selling online as grab blocks so they saw an opportunity it was a way for them to move out clear out some of their warehouses so they attacked a company and I, I think that was a dick move in, in my personal opinion because no one attacked them when they were doing shitty I do my reviews but I'm just being honest none of these other companies jumped on them and tried to put them down when they were in a bad spot and like I described before it's not like the band box is just tanking all of a sudden. They just had a bad month due to some licensing issues. It's kind of a dick move to go jump on them for that. And if they're tr really trying to start a war between these companies, it's not going to end well. Because next time they do a shitty box, then people are going to jump right back on them. I think it was a bad move on their part, and I, I just don't really agree with it. It was not in good taste, in my opinion, and I don't like it. And a lot of people agree. A lot of people have left the nerd block company because of what they're doing. They're trying to pick on other companies. And I I really don't appreciate that. I've never been a big fan of the NerdBlock's business operations to begin with, so that just shows the kind of company they are. And, you know, I'm not going to cancel because of it. I, at the end of the day, I understand it's just business. They're just trying to get ahead. That's the business world. It's not a nice place to be. They're not friends with these other companies. So I get it, but, you know, you can still be, like, gentlemen about it. So... That's my thoughts on it, and that's the most I'm going to talk about any one individual box, but a lot of people have been asking about that, and it's been a hot topic lately, so I thought I'd delve into it. So that's my thoughts on it. I wouldn't worry about the band box. They're going to be just fine, and the nerd block company's kind of a dick, to sum up that story. So that's what it is. So that's why the band box got in last place. They had a bad month. No big deal. I think they're... Uh, I think it's January or December, I can't remember which one it is, they're doing like an anniversary box. They're bringing back a bunch of really good artists, Chris Uminga is going to be back in the box, he was my favorite artist, they're doing a bunch of other stuff, so I'm looking forward to that, so I'm totally on board. So unfortunately, this does get last place, but shit happens, I wouldn't worry about it. Alright, enough talking. Number 10 was Z-Box, one of the few foreign boxes I get. This box comes from the UK. It's been around a very long time. And honestly, it's a good company. 
They do a lot more than just put out a box. They sell all kinds of products at a very reasonable price, and they're very reasonable on shipping, too. To ship this box to America was only $3, and a lot of times on their products, they give free shipping all over the world, so it's very reasonable. Um, the only reason this gets lowered down is because the UK is just very limited in what they have. America's got all the coolest shit as far as like mystery boxes. Then probably like Japan, they've got a bunch of cool shit over there too. Everywhere else in the world is very lacking. But the UK is trying to keep up the best they can, but it's difficult because everything in this box is from America. So there's a lot of money lost in translation because they order these things from America, get them shipped to the UK, put it in a box, and then ship it back to the U.S. So it's like, it's usually not worth it for us because it's very common items, things that we see every day. There's pretty much never going to be exclusive stuff except for a very rare occasion. So if for people in the U.K., it's perfect. They get free shipping. They get cool stuff. It's a really good deal for someone in the U.K. But for people in the U.S., not that it's a bad deal or anything. It's still worth the money, but it probably just wouldn't be top choice for a box because most of the other boxes here we get exclusive stuff we get stuff you only find in boxes we get things you can't find in stores so it just makes more sense to stick with those and not waste money on shipping and import fees and all that stuff so but you know overall it's still a cool box I still liked everything in there they kept in theme they did a nice job but it's just it was a little too overly common because again UK doesn't get exclusive stuff when it comes to like collectible and comic book stuff so that's pretty much it to sum up but I still like the company. I think they do cool shit. Alrighty. Number nine. Number nine was Loot Crate DX. So, uh, Loot Crate DX. Uh, the bigger version of Loot Crate. The theme was mystical. And, you know, this was actually a pretty decent box. The reason it's lower on the countdown is because it got lower value. Um, they've been okay at putting in better quality stuff. That's supposed to be the point. It's just like Loot Crate. It always has the same theme. It's just supposed to be like higher quality and bigger items. At first, they weren't really doing that. Now they kind of are. But they were pretty low on the value. So, like, in this one, we got a sweater instead of a t-shirt, which is cool. That's what you'd expect. And you get, like, bigger collectibles and things like that and a little nicer quality on other items. So that's exactly what you'd want out of a bigger box. And we also got, like, a blanket in there. It's just stuff that either wouldn't fit in a smaller box or is too pricey for a smaller box. So that seems to be what this, was, this month was geared towards, which is good. That's exactly what I want to see. But the value just wasn't quite there. With, this ends up being about a $55 box, so it's going to be pretty hard to get anywhere near double the value on that, even with higher quality stuff. And that's usually this box's problem. That's usually the problem of any big, more expensive box. You're not getting quite double your value. You're still getting more than you paid for, which is good, but it, it gets very risky. The closer you get to what you paid for, it, the riskier it is, because that's a lot of money to put out there every single month and not get awesome stuff. So you really want to get closer to double your value so you don't have to like everything in there, and that still makes it worth it. So that's the reason this one got lower, but it was still cool stuff, and Loot Crate's pretty good about giving 100% exclusive items, so that's also cool as well. But I'm not sure if this one's going to stay around too much longer because it's just too pricey. That's a lot of money to spend, and when you're not getting that much value, if you don't like something, it's harder to sell, and it ends up being a waste of money sometimes, and it's just too risky every month. Because if you get even one bad month, that's like 50, 60 bucks that you just wasted. That's a lot of money. So I'll have to see how much longer that one's going to stay around. So yeah. Anyway, what about number eight? We got our Legion of Collectors, the DC box. And this one was fine, nothing really wrong with it. Um, these boxes are just getting very, very generic. And I've heard from a few people, a very few people, that they like that. They like that it has the same stuff every month. They like that you know what you're getting, which I guess can be a good thing because you're not risking that much. But it just gets old after a while. It, all these boxes are pretty much the same thing. And this one's usually, um, you always get a pop and you get like usually one clothing item, like a hat or a shirt. And a lot of times they'll put a mug in there or a Dorbs and then a comic. And those are all good products. 
but when they're doing the same thing every month, it gets kind of tired, and some of these boxes don't have the best character picks in there, and they're just minor stuff. Nothing that says this is a bad box. It's still good. If you love DC, this is definitely the box for you, but it just hasn't... I don't think the DC one has ever honestly like blown me away. The only one I was really psyched about was the Batman Superman because we got the armored Batman pop and that was the only place you got that. So it wasn't just an alternate paint job, it was an exclusive mold too, which was awesome. After that, it just kind of, there was never that much value and the characters they picked weren't that great and it, just a lot of teeny tiny little nitpicky things but a lot of small things add up to one big thing. So, nothing wrong with this. It wasn't a bad box. It just wasn't fantastic either. And it usually isn't. It's usually around the middle of the countdown. I'm always happy to see DC stuff, and it's always pretty popular. But at the end of the day, I think I'm more of a Marvel guy than I am a DC. And most people are too. I know there are hardcore DC fans, but if you take the poll, there's always a little bit more Marvel than there is DC as far as fan base. And that makes sense because they're kind of controlling it right now. They're kind of on top of the whole cinematic universe and other stuff like that. So it makes sense. So uh, nothing too wrong with this. It just wasn't the best choices, wasn't the best characters. No biggie. But yeah, decent value is still worth it. Alrighty, number seven. And number seven was Nerd Block Classic. Now this box got decent value, got pretty much double what you paid for, um, just not the most practical items. Uh, this is the same thing I've always said about the Nerd Block Company. They work really hard to get like almost, m like mostly full of all exclusives. That doesn't really make sense. So their boxes aren't usually 100% exclusive, they're usually like 80, 60 to 80% exclusive to that box, which is good. We like that. We like to see things you're only getting in the box. The problem is their exclusive stuff isn't that exclusive. Um, like, for example, we got socks in here, which socks are cool, but it's not that big of a deal to get exclusive socks. There's so many different types of socks. It's not like you, if you wore them out, people would know it was exclusive to a box or not. There's a million different kinds of socks. And small things like pins, like all companies have exclusive pins, all companies have exclusive shirts, no big deal. Um, we did get one figure, which was the sodas figure, which was fine. That was exclusive too, which is cool, but it was just kind of an odd thing. They make odd partnerships, like with the Sodas Company and the Springs Company. And they had them with Titans, but I think they've lost that because we haven't seen them there in a while. They just don't have the best partnerships. Loot Crate has all the dominating ones like Funko and Quantum Mechanics, but Nerdblock just doesn't have the best partnerships. If they got better partnerships, this would be a really amazing box. It just wasn't as lovable stuff. The franchises they picked weren't as, were fine, but the items that they were posted on were just kind of like, okay, like that's just a little bit weird and awkward, so it wasn't the best. And the resale value is really low because of that. Not a lot of people wanted this stuff because it was just kind of strange and out there. But it, it was still decent though. You got a good value on it and a good variety. But you know, it was some weird picks. And that kind of has always been that way. So I hope that they get some better, um, companies, some better distributors and things like that on their payroll because they really have some good potential. They do good business with companies. They definitely are business oriented, so they could do that. But yeah, and also some of these nerd blocks are a little bit lower because again, I don't really like how they handle their companies sometimes. They they don't always handle it the best way and things they've done like they did to the band box, not personally a fan of and I know other people aren't either. So that is considered into where they are placed. Speaking of which, number six, Arcade Block, another one from the Nerd Block Company. So next month is going to be full of Nerd Blocks. They had a Black Friday special where all their blocks were half off, so I decided to try out all of them. So I'm going to have every single Nerd Block in the month of December, just because it was so cheap and I might as well put them all in there, just so people know if they do pick the Nerd Block Company, you still have like eight blocks to choose from, help you out there a little bit too. But anyway, uh, Arcade Block, this one was fine. But again, items weren't super practical. We got some shot glasses, which are cool, but we, how many shot glasses do you really need? And then we got a tea infuser, which again is cool for people that drink tea, but uh, not super popular of a thing to do here. And the book was awesome. I love art books, but I didn't play Diablo 3. It looks really awesome. I'm still going to enjoy the art book. Shirt was fine and a lanyard. So cool stuff. It was interesting stuff, just not super practical. And uh, this box usually sticks to more classic games, which is what I like about it. Uh, some boxes go modern games, some boxes go classic. 
This one's usually more classic, and this time they went more modern, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with modern games, but I'd like that they kind of stick to one or the other, in my opinion, because so many do one thing, it'd be nice for them to set themselves apart. Like, loot gaming is all about the modern game, so they could really set themselves apart by saying, hey, this one's going to be like classic gaming, because that's what I'm more interested in personally. I just, I like modern games, I just don't keep up to date with them as much, so some of it's lost on me. So I, I would hope that they... Either way is fine, but just kind of stick to one and go with it. Because it's kind of weird when they get mixed together sometimes, but that's just me. So yeah, not super practical stuff, and it was still cool, decent value, but that's right in the middle of the countdown. This is number 6 out of 11, so we're right in that middle range where it's like, definitely wasn't bad, but it wasn't great either. It was just okay. If you're really into gaming, you would have liked it. If you weren't really into gaming, probably wouldn't have, so... It's pretty simple, but this is where you kind of have to put your own personal taste into these boxes to kind of figure out what you might like. And on that same company, Comic Block, number five. So, the third box I get from them. Classic arcade comic. I want Comic Block to be good more than anything. This is the one I have the highest hopes for because this is really what I want. I want a comic block that's not just comic books. There's so many comic boxes out there that are strictly comic books, which is fine for that, but I want one that's comic books and shirts and collectibles all mixed together. This one recently has started doing that, but it's still heavily comic book oriented. It's like 80% comics and then 20% something else. And it's usually just one t-shirt and like one keychain. It's like, well, that's not enough. It, then that's just all comic books featuring a shirt. That's not anything. I want them to mix it up. If they have exclusive covers, yeah, toss them in there. Why not? If it's not an exclusive cover and it's just a random issue, keep it out, put something else in, put a mystery mini or pop figure. I don't care. Just mix it up. Kind of keep it going. Keep the momentum. I, I just... Never have time for a new comic series or like five new comic series from a box every month. So, And it's just one issue, so it's hard to get into that issue with just one comic. And they're not doing graphic novels, so I'm just throwing out tons of complaints here. But good stuff about this box. It is a good box sometimes, though, because the comics they put in there typically are um, exclusive covers, which do add a decent amount of value to them. Um, but some of the comic franchises they pick are very limited market. Like one of them we got in here was Batman Ninja Turtles. That was dope. Exclusive cover. Fuck yeah, I'm all on board for that. And then some of the other ones was like Mast and Behringer, I think the other one was. Never heard of them in my life. Didn't look cool. Have no inter interest in reading them. So it was like those just kind of weren't worth anything either because they're not that popular. And it's like, okay, I get they're trying to push new comic franchises, but uh, stick to the classics sometimes. Stick to what people know. And there's Hellboy. Hellboy's cool. I like him. So that's kind of the problem they have. Putting too many comics and then just kind of doing too much random stuff. I say keep the two best ones, Hellboy, Turtles, Batman, and put those in there. Fuck the other two comics. Put other stuff in there. That's my opinion. You want to do comics? Do it, but do it well. And, you know, not every month has to be full of comics. Kick the comics out some month. Do some different variety stuff. You know, whatever. That's what I hope it will be. It's kind of seeming like it never will be that, which is a bummer, so... Luckily, Loot Crate's doing a Marvel Crate. Funko does a Marvel Crate. I just wish that there was somebody, some company that did a comic theme block that wasn't specific to either Marvel, DC, IDW, that did them all. But no one's done it to this day. Hopefully you will one day, buddy. But not today. Anyway, good comics, cool shirt, had a cool art print, came with a little mug and a lanyard. So, eh, like I said, comics featuring other stuff. But you got good value, so it was okay, and it was still interesting. But yeah, this one's still in the middle too, so no big surprise. So all three of the comic blocks were, or the nerd blocks are right in the center. For with good reason, they all kind of came right about the same. Same problems with each one, same company problems. No surprise. Alright, moving on to the top four. Here's where it gets better and more interesting. Four, Smuggler's Bounty. Beep. The Rogue One Edition. Now, this box didn't do too well when I first reviewed it, um, but that was because it was before the movie came out. Still is. The movie comes out tomorrow, manana, um, and yeah, that's gonna change the value of this box pretty drastically, in my opinion. Because from what I was looking at before, all the values 
on these box, these pop figures, very low, very low value. And I think part of the problem is they're just not well known. These, they don't know who these people are because they haven't seen the movie yet. They just look like regular people. So it kind of is a double-edged sword. Um, releasing the box after the movie cre uh, cre increases sales for the box, but releasing the box before the movie increases hype for the movie, increasing ticket sales, blah -de blah So it goes both ways, but this one was before the movie, so not too many people were hyped for it. I think a lot of people sold them for dirt cheap, but I guarantee as soon as the movie releases tomorrow, the prices are going to jump back up because now people are going to want those characters they just saw. Hopefully, that's the theory, but who knows. So that's why I'm moving up a little because a premonition of this box getting sold a little more right after the movie comes out because people will be so hyped on it. Other than that, like I've said about these boxes, the Funko box is very generic. This one almost always comes with two pop figures, a shirt, a patch, a pin, and one other item, and this one was a Hikari. So it's like the one item, extra item is a variable. The rest are just, you know exactly what it is, and it's like... Gets a little boring, so that's just me. But it still did good at decent value and everything like that. The shirt was cool. I'll wear it to the premiere. That works. So that was all good. Star Wars stuff. So pretty simple, as you've seen so far, to implement your interests on what you like. Marvel, DC, Star Wars, comics, games. See how easy it is? Now, that's, now you know why I do it. Number three. Loot Crate Classic. Did pretty okay. Um, I was a huge fan of the Q fig. And I think everyone was. One partnership, like I said, Loot Box, Loot Crate definitely has is that partnership, and it's a really awesome one. It honestly is. I love Quantum Mechanics and their Q figs. This one we got Doctor Strange. He looks amazing. They did a really good job. Uh, the journal in there actually was sold for a very high price, so it's very valuable journal. And overall. It was really good on the value. $20 box ended up being more like $50 box, so you got more than double your value. You got a good variety. I'm pretty sure everything in there was exclusive. The comic was 100% exclusive, so they really are like they really know what they're doing. They're doing a really good job, giving good value, giving good variety. They got good partnerships, so they definitely deserve to be up here, no doubt about it, in the top three. So well deserved. Good job, Loot Crate. I love it. Can't wait to see what you do next month. Do do. All right, top two. How's my time looking? I uh, can't see it. Video might cut off. Now, top two is difficult because I don't think there was a clear winner this time. For the first time ever, I don't think there was a clear winner. Um, this was a little difficult, but I'll explain why. But number two is Lutaku. Now, I'm really starting to love this box um, because they are just, they have so many things in there that we don't get in America and that we had never seen here. So that's really cool. Because, like I said, America has cool shit. So does Japan. That's where a lot of things, Japan and China, are where these things are made. So they have all the companies and factories that make this stuff. So they really do cool stuff, high quality stuff. And it's really amazing. This was a Street Fighter box, and we got awesome figures. And we got a rare pop figure in there from Pop Asia. And we got different stuff from Street Fighter. It was really cool stuff. All had really great value. All had really great detail. A good mix of stuff. All collectibles. I really loved it. And the, the only problem I ever usually ever have with this box is just the price. It comes from Hong Kong. And it's a huge box. So to get that shipped from Hong Kong to here at that weight is astronomical. So... That's usually the only problem is so much money is wasted on shipping that it brings down the overall lower lowers the overall value of the box, which is very unfortunate. And it's no one's fault really. It's not like anyone's doing anything wrong and you can't blame the company. It's just the shipping service. There's nothing you can do about it. It is what it is. So I'm gonna be running out of time here in a second. Sorry, I had to reset my camera. Not gonna move fast, my battery's gonna die and I can't change it. Anyway, like I was saying. Great box. The shipping takes over a lot of it, so that's very unfortunate, but it is what it is. Other than that, great company. Uh, they really put some effort into it. I personally love Lutaku and what they bring me every month. It's such a surprise because I'm saying these Funko boxes are so generic. You know exactly what you're getting. I have no idea what I'm getting when I open this box, and it's cool themes too. And they're doing Dragon Ball next month, which I'm so fucking psyched about, man. I can't wait to get my Dragon Ball box, but yeah, love the company. 
good stuff, good mix of stuff. So if you like anime, Japanese stuff, definitely the box for you. It's just a little pricey. So, the number one spot, surprisingly, goes to the Doctor Strange Marvel Goods and Gear box. And I was kind of surprised by this. And like I was saying, um, not, not a, oh, I can't understand what I'm saying. So, not a clear winner, basically. This one didn't, like, blow anyone else away. Usually there's, like, a clear winner and loser, and everyone else kind of blends between. It was a hard pick between Lutaku and this one. It really was. Um, but I just kind of went with my gut and went with this one. Their first box was pretty cool. Uh, it wasn't perfect or anything, but everything in there was exclusive. We got things we'd never gotten before, like a robe. We got a Doctor Strange robe. And the um, cup holders are the... Coasters were really cool. They were like nice etched metal. And the art print in there was really badass. It was from a comic book. And then we also got our shot glasses. And the pin. The pin was so cool. It was one of the coolest pins I've ever seen. And then it had a little pamphlet with a cipher on it if you wanted to solve it, which I thought was really cool. It just showed they put a lot of thought into it. And then we saw Doctor Strange, the movie, right after that. So that went along really well, too. And that movie did good. So I'm happy for it. And I'm really, really hopeful for this box. I hope just like I am with Comic Block, that it does so good because the Funko Marvel's just been okay lately. So hopefully they can pick it up and be great because I want all exclusive Marvel stuff and that'd be fantastic. So please be good. Please make your way through. And we'll be getting one of those again in January. So there's that to look forward to. I think my camera's going to die now. We'll see. God, my batteries go through so quick. Uh, is there anything else I have to say? Uh, uh, that was the number one spot. Sorry about that. Fucking camera cut out. Man, so many issues because it's such a long video. Like I was saying, uh, this box, good shit, good product, good value, exclusive. So, and I was saying before, there was no clear winner. Between this and Lutaku, either one could have gone in first place. It was very, very nitpicky things that brought one to the other, but... Any of the top three could have been, like, number one. So this one was a very close call because over time I've kind of weeded out a lot of the bad boxes and kind of only kept the better boxes in here. So this review is kind of the best of the best as it is. If a box isn't in here, not to, not to say that they're bad, but they would probably be lower on the countdown. And there's no collector's case in here this month because they've switched to a bi-monthly method so they were not here this month. They'll be around again next month. And a lot more boxes coming up. Like I got the Marvel Goods and Gear. I'm also trying out the Sanrio Small Gift Box. I want to try just all these other new ones out. It's been a long time since I've ordered new boxes. And I think the same 10 is getting old now. So I want to switch it up a little bit. So we will be doing that. December will be an insane month. Lots of videos to watch. And I'm going to do more toy reviews. And eventually, if I ever have time, I'm going to do a tour of this place. It's so gigantic now. Uh, and yeah, that should be good too. Anyway, I hope I was able to help you out at all. I hope that helped in some way. I hope that helped you to kind of hone in to what you might like. Please let me know if it did. i love to help you guys out. If you have any questions, just let me know. Comments, uh, that's the best way to get me on comment on the video. I'll try to answer them as soon as possible with the best of my knowledge. So that's what we do. Feel free to jump on the Beardy Nerd fan page or anything like that and share your collection, talk it out, so jump in on it. And I do giveaways all the time. We are currently in a giveaway to get to 8,000 subscribers, but I've been stuck at 7750 for three months now. Three months stuck. I have not, I move up, move up, move down, move up, move down, move up, move down. 7750 for months now. We may never get to 8,000. I'm, at some point, I'm just going to stop and just give stuff away no matter what. So I'm going to have to come up with better giveaway contests because now my subs are all broken because a YouTube fucked something up. Anyway, constant giveaways on here. If there's anything you'd like to see, if there's a box you'd like to see, a toy or a figure you'd like a review of, a movie review or a game review, anything, let me know in the comments. I'm here to please. I'm here to help. That's what I like to do. Anyway. This has been the Beardy Nerd. I hope I have been helpful to you in one way or another. Hopefully. So, tune into the channel. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. And we'll do this shit. Talk to you in the comments. Thank you for watching. Love you all. Peace.